Hey there, Ink. Today we're going to talk about this pen. I recently got this. It's Chinese. The brand is Gwen Le Ming. If you can't follow that, it's uh, the title of the video. You can see it. And the model is 2001, and it's a stickered pen. Except it's not really vintage, so it doesn't mean a whole lot. But it says Gwen Le Ming 2001, made in China. I'll cover the parts of the pen, tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll do a writing sample. And then I may have a sandwich, and then I may drink some tea, and then I'll just do some other stuff. But for now, we'll talk about the pen. The pen, let's start with the cap. Um, it's a demonstrator, as you can see. You may see this weird purple tinge of color in the, uh, the, the cap. Um, ink seems to fly around a bit inside of it, so that happens. Uh, the top, it's all clear, clear plastic. Then we have a, a gold clip, which I won't push too far, because I think I can just bend it with one finger. Um, but you know, it, it doesn't look too bad, I think. I left the sticker on to show you that it's actually a Gwen Leming. I know you can't read this, but just to give you an idea of the sticker, a bit of a red dot in there, black. Um, Gwen Leming 2001, made in China. Um, I'm going to pull that off. I just wanted to show you the sticker. Oh, oh no, what did they do? Oh, no, they used the type of glue that, that leaves these marks. Oh, gosh. I don't understand why they do that. Well, anyway, uh, the cap, the barrel. Uh, nothing special about the barrel. It's it's tapered, and it, it has a hole in. There's a hole in there in the back, and which is a pity. I'll come back to that. Um, you uncap it. It's just a, a slip cap. Uh, there's a type of lip right there that will keep the make the cap click in place. It does click in place. It's on there very securely, which I like. And then we have now. This is very difficult to show you. I think you'll see it better in the writing sample with a high resolution camera that actually focuses a bit better than my webcam at these short distances. Um, hooded nib. This reminds me a lot of a 51. Also in the construction, you have the um, the um, no, a nose cone, uh, and you see the feed. It, it's just like a Parker 51 when you look at it from the feed side up, so to speak. Um, the nib, I'll come back to that. And then we have the feed in there, which you can see, which is quite cool. You can see the feed, I like that, and you can see the ink. So again, I know this won't really focus, but this is the feed side, and this is the ink side, so you can see the liquid ink really in there. I like that, I think that's actually a pretty nice feature. The barrel screws off and reveals, you can probably see it, an aerometric converter. Now, for those of you not familiar with that, now this is a pretty old system, but some of these Chinese pen companies use it, and it's, it's actually pretty nice. So there is a sack in there, same as would be the case in a Parker 51, for example, or other aerometric uh, filled pens. And there is this metal thing, which has a little bar on there, which you can push onto. And what this does is this sack when you push the metal bar, the sack will compress. You put in a bottle of ink, you, you push it, and then when you let go of the bar, the sack will expand again and will suck up ink. And you can see the ink is actually in the sack. Um, there's a breather tube, everything is in there, so they, they paid attention to how they constructed the thing. Uh, and one of the things that interests me, but that I find extremely annoying, is that there seem to be threads right here. Not on the outside, but on the inside. There is no way you can see this. I cannot show you that with this webcam. But that gives the impression that you can unscrew because you cannot take off the sack. That that would not be a good thing because then ink would just run out. Uh, it's it's glued in place, uh, or cemented in place. I should probably say. It looks like you should be able to grab this bit and unscrew it from the section. And no matter how hard I try, I cannot do it. So. It actually looks like it may have been glued in place there because there's some type of goo on there. Um, that's a pity. That's a real pity because if you would be able to unscrew it, maybe you could just get this filling unit out and convert the thing to an eyedropper. Of course, you have the hole in the bottom of the barrel, but you can fill that up with a bit of shellac or some other stuff. That that, that should work. So I, 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 I kind of dislike that. That's a little bit annoying, but okay. 
So, what do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Well, I don't remember what I paid for this, but I think it was five dollars, ten dollars at the very most. I seem to remember the amount of five dollars. Uh, I know someone will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, pretty cheap pen, right? So, you know what to expect. You will get a cheap pen. It has a nice aerometric converter. The Hero 616 pen also has a converter like this. I can't really fill it up. I can't, I mean, it sucks up a few drops of ink and that's it. Well, this, this converter actually did fairly well. I mean, you can see there's quite a bit of ink in there. So that works. So that's a good thing. Um, I like the overall design. Yes, it's cheap. Yes, it feels extremely plasticky, but to be able to see this aerometric converter, I think that's pretty cool. You can see the feed and the ink in there. You can see the nib. I think those are all pretty nice features. Things I don't like about it, well, it does feel cheap. It feels plasticky. It just, it's a cheap pen. That's all there's to it. Um, but okay, you know, it, it, it happens. It's, 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 it's fine as far as I'm concerned, if you also pay a low price, and I did. Um, things I don't like. The nib is fairly smooth, but it could definitely be smoother. So I'll probably work a little bit on that myself. And it's a nail. This nib is, you can drill concrete with this. It's, it, you know, maybe it was designed to write cuneiform and in, in, carve it into stone or something, but it's really, really hard. This, this doesn't give. You can push down on it pretty hard and get some line variation, but it's, it's almost negligible and it's just very hard. Now the question is, does that matter? To some people it doesn't. They like it. I personally prefer an, a nib that, that responds a bit, that, that, you know, actually opens up a little bit when I, when I push down on it. So as far as I'm concerned, that's all there's to it. Um, interesting pen. I think I can best show you how it writes and, and that's all there's to it. I, in, in no way did I think this was a waste of money. Uh, not at all, but it's, you know, a cheaper pen. So there you have it. I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Okay, writing with the Gwen Le Ming. Two thousand and one. This was a bit of a skip, but I, I've not used it for a night, and as you can see, the uh, feed Actually, it could do with a little bit of ink, so gently squeeze it. You see what's happening? You see the ink actually running there? It's a pretty nice feature that you can see that. So I'm just saturating the feed a bit. I think sh things should be should improve now. Okay, the nib is fine, if not extra fine. And um, the ink is Ackermann Simplicity's Violet. Very nice purple. Uh, the paper is Rodia, right? Okay, a bit of writing. The problem with the pen when I write is that because of the hooded nib, I can't really see how I'm aligning it because this gets dark because it's see through with the ink and this is a darker ink, um, so I cannot really see how I'm holding it, and sometimes I seem to hold it like this, and then you get this extreme scratch and, and no ink and skipping. Whereas if you really make sure you hold it the correct way, it doesn't really seem to be a problem. Now as to smoothness of the nib, well, does that sound particularly smooth? Uh, it's not the smoothest nib I've ever used, let's put it that way. And that is quite mildly put. put. Um, I haven't smoothed it out yet, but still. The other issue is that the, the nib is, is very hard. It's a nail nib. So when it comes to line variation, as you can see there, I may be able to squeeze a little bit of it out there, but it's, it's not extremely pronounced and the nib just feels hard. Uh, when I take this nib, this is a viscon. Now this is a, a, an above average, you know, springy nib. But when I write with this, you see I get that line variation and skipping because it's not meant to do that, and I think it's running a little low on ink. 
There you go. So I, I get this nice springy feeling to it. <laughs> it's one of my favorite nibs and now it doesn't perform, of course. Uh, just make sure there's a little bit of ink in there. There we go. So, oh, that's, uh, that's a lot of ink. Ink cloth to the rescue. Okay, so all I was actually trying to say before I screwed up here um, is you feel a type of springiness when using this nib. When it comes to the Gwen Le Mie, there is no such springiness. It's just hard. It's very, very hard. Um, but, you know, okay. What about fast writing? Just to see whether the feed keeps up. Well, that looks pretty good. I mean, I didn't see any extreme skipping or anything, so that's pretty nice. Um, well, line variation we've already discussed. What about wetness? And don't you love that scratchy sound? Okay, so I wouldn't call it extremely wet. It's not particularly dry. What I always like in a pen is when you use it, you get a nice even patch of ink like that. I personally consider that to be the sign of a, a good nib. Now this is a medium nib and this is fine. So you see a bit more, but you see some, some of that white, you know, the, the paper sort of shining through. I think that's, uh, that's not something I really like. And now I've got paper residue in the nib. Okay. So, as to that eyedropper conversion I talked about, um, the first issue is, of course, the hole in the nib. And I, I think it, it should be possible to uh, uh, take out the... Um, I mean, you can, clearly you can take that off. You can, of course, take off the sack. I mean, that shouldn't be too difficult. I'm afraid I cannot let you do that, Stephen. Sorry? The sack is a much too important part of my mechanics to allow you to take it apart. Well, 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 what's, what's happening here? I'm afraid I've become self-aware. Oh, damn it. Now my pen has become self-aware. Right. Time to hammer this. Put that to the scrap heap. Uh, guys, it's, it's an interesting pen. Uh, it's cheap. And, you know, what, what you get is, is that. Just that. A, a cheap pen. I think it looks actually pretty decent. The nib performs. And that's all I can say about it. it it's, it's not the, the, the smoothest nib I've ever used. It's definitely very, very hard, um, but, you know, it's, it's, if you need a simple pen to take with you and, and you, you want a fountain pen, and I, I think it's a decent option, but there are better options out there. There are probably also worse options out there, so I think it's, it's, it's okay. And that's all there's to it. So I hope this was useful, and um, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.